Jean Lorraine was a French writer of the decadence and I symbolist schools whose biographical details we covered in our 75th episode, covering the more recent English collection of his stories, The Soul Drinker and Other Decadent Fantasies. The majority of The Nightmares of an Ether Drinker is devoted to tales happening in Lorraine's contemporary France, if not taking place in Paris itself, as seems to be the norm with Lorraine. It is a partial translation of Lorraine's cycle of ether stories from his 1895 Sensations et Souvenirs. The Egregore is the story of a psychic vampire of Lorraine's own invention, given that Egregore actually refers to something else normally. The individual in question possessing a pair at a music recital. Funeral oration has the narrator take part in the funeral of his friend Jacques, who died due to the consumption of ether, all thanks to his long-dead love, the etheromaniac Suzanne. The locked room is the story of a nightly visitation of a dead woman in the room next to the one where the narrator is staying for the night. Magic Lantern is more of a summary of ideas, taking the ideas for the unknown woman and the lover of consumptives that Lorraine would later expand into full-length stories as seen in my review of The Soul Drinker. The Glass of Blood is a bit of an unfinished story, dealing with the obsession of an actress with the young daughter of her new husband, whom she married so she could continue to follow the girl around. Beyond is the tale of a faithless husband, who is whoring about town due to the frailty of his deathly sick wife, and the vision he has one night after sleeping with a prostitute. One of them, or the spirit of the mask, is the story of a man's meeting with a strangely garbed, masked figure one night while on the way to a masked ball. An undesirable residence narrates how the narrator's friend Serge was nearly driven mad while researching ancient grimoires and magic lore, in an apartment where people tend to commit suicide. A Troubled Night is one of the most outright supernatural stories I've read of Lorraine's, about a visitor to his friend's house being haunted and assaulted by giant bizarre birds trying to slice him up with their beaks. A posthumous protest relates what came to pass when the protagonist sat down to work beneath a plaster scalp of Donatello's unknown woman, which he decided to have cast and painted up as a severed head, complete with blood splatters and dead, unseeing eyes. The Holes in the Mask is the tale of a man taken to a strange ball by what appears to be his friend the Shackles, and what befell him there where no one may enter beside those in the know. The Double is the tale of the narrator being visited by a strange, repulsive, restless man, who seems to constantly look behind his shoulder, being sure there is someone there whom the narrator cannot see. The Spirit of the Ruins narrates the protagonist's visit to Provence, and him encountering the frightening visage of Fulderad, the centennial hag who wanders about the ruins of the Romain castle with her herd of goats, and of whom men say she was always there, just as old as she is now. Dolmans relates the strange story of an old cottage, when it was inhabited by a man obsessed with the Marquise de Sade, living in the cottage with his son and a monkey in a dress. The last four stories are more of Lorraine's grim, bloody fairy tales, which are usually the best kind of Lorraine's story. First, we have The Princess of the Red Lilies, which is the story of Audover, the daughter of the king, using her power to crush and caress flowers to send magical wounds and death charms against the king's enemies, and what befell one night when a ragged, bloodied, and mortally wounded wanderer sought asylum at the princess's convent. The Princess at the Sabbath is the story of Ilse, the vain princess whose obsession with the gleaming statues of toads leads her to her fantastical journey to the Sabbath and the loss of her most cherished reflection. Narcis is a story that will remind one mostly of Théophile Gautier. It is the story of a short life 
of a fantastically beautiful child pharaoh, descendant of Isis herself, and how he was kept prisoner, ignorant of most things, by her priesthood, desiring to rule Egypt by turning him into a powerless figurehead. Finally, the Princess Ormiroiz is a very slight variation of the Princess of the Sabbath. We have not Princess Ilse, but Princess Illis, and she goes willingly to the Numidian witches to preserve her beauty forever, but the result is much the same as with Ilse and her toads. A great collection, though one wishes Lorraine wrote more of his quote-unquote fairy tales.